Hi, and welcome to today's video in which we'll be etching our own printed circuit boards. The first step to designing your own printed circuit board is to lay out all of the traces in some software. In this case, I'll be using a program called Fritzing. The second step for producing your own printed circuit board involves transferring your design onto a copper board. For this, I'll be using the toner transfer method. However, if you don't have access to a laser jet, you can always hand draw or tape your design onto the copper board instead. Once you're satisfied with your design, you can simply go ahead and print it using your laser jet printer. As you can see, my particular design is going to fit onto this piece of scrap copper board which I have lying around. So we need to now cut it out and ensure that it fits perfectly onto our copper board. Next, it's a good idea that we wear some gloves whilst cleaning up our copper board using some sandpaper and some alcohol. Now that our copper board is perfectly clean, we're going to be transferring our printed design over to it. For this, I'm going to be using some acetone in the form of nail polish remover. What we need to do is apply two or three drops of acetone onto the board. And then we simply take our printed design and put it face down onto the copper board. Make sure that it lines up perfectly with the copper board. After two to 10 seconds, we take some paper towel and apply some constant pressure onto the board. This will ensure that the toner sticks to the printed circuit board. For larger circuit boards, it's a good idea to use something like a vise or clamp to apply this constant pressure. After applying the constant pressure for a reasonable amount of time, we remove our paper towel and allow our design to dry off. Once all the acetone has evaporated off the paper, we simply submerge it in some normal water. Make sure that the paper gets soaked completely. Now that the paper is soaked with water, we gently pull off all of the paper. Be as gentle as possible whilst doing this, as you do not want to rub the toner off the board. Next, we'll need to prepare ourselves our etching bar. For this, I'll be mixing a solution of ammonium per sulfate. Be sure to look at the safety warnings on the side of the packet before doing this. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to add about a spoonful to a aluminium tray. You can also do this in a pot or a frying pan. If you prepare too much of this solution, that's also fine. You can always just keep the solution that you've mixed. Next, we're going to have to boil some hot water using a kettle or similar. Take your copper board and place it inside the solution already. Now that the water is boiling, we simply add it to the bath. Make sure that the copper board is completely submerged right now. And what we'll do is we'll slowly agitate the mixture. For larger boards, you'll have to do this on a stove or camping cooker or similar. The etching process takes between five and 10 minutes. And after about five minutes or so, you should be able to see that most of the copper coating has been etched away. It's been about eight minutes since I first started etching this board. And as you can see, all the copper has been dissolved. So it's time to remove the printed circuit board from our etching solution and to thoroughly wash it using some water. You can keep this etching solution for later use as there is bound to be some excess left inside. Now that we've thoroughly washed our PCB, we'll remove it and dry it off using a paper towel. What you'll be able to notice is that only the traces that we have transferred on are left over. 
The fourth step now is to clean up this circuit board ready for soldering. The first thing we'll need to do is dissolve the toner off the printed circuit board. For this again we'll apply about two drops of acetone to the board and let it soak for about two to ten seconds. Now using some paper towel all we do is we gently rub across the toner exposing the copper underneath the toner. Now it's time to drill some holes into our printed circuit board. For this I'll be using a 0.8mm drill bit as well as a rotary tool. The final fifth step is to populate your board and solder all of the components into place. So in my case I'm going to add a resistor as well as an LED onto this circuit board. And that's it, we've now finished and soldered all of our components onto our circuit board. Now it's time to simply snip all of the leads. The final step of producing your own printed circuit board is simply plugging it in and testing to see if it does what you want it to. So I hope this video has helped you understand the different steps and processes involved in producing your own printed circuit board. Apart from that, thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment and subscribe.